I was saying is that my background is really as a researcher. Um, I've done some work with environmental fate and transport, um, done some atmospheric modeling, as well as some nitrogen, kind of um, specifically nitrous oxide mitigation work with Tim Griffiths and the mesocosms here, um, and then some more chemistry heavy work um, into atmospheric aerosol chemistry well. So my background's pretty broad, um, but now um, I'm still a researcher. So my appointment's about half-time research, so I'll be continuing to do research. But I'm also half-time, um, or mostly my title is a research and fellowship coordinator. And so that's really what I'm going to go into and talk today about some of the programs we have at Minnesota Sea Grant and what Minnesota Sea Grant is. Um, and I'm going to say Minnesota Sea Grant, and what I'm really going to mean is University of Minnesota Sea Grant. So we are a um, University of Minnesota program. So we don't exist outside the university. Um, we're almost like our own kind of pseudo department that's multi-campus. So um, I'm going to talk about what we are, what I do, um, and then some of our fellowship and research opportunities we have uh, for both students and staff. And so and how maybe some of you can take advantage of them in the future or people you know, essentially. So the Sea Grant is a unique program. Um, it's federally funded about two thirds and then state funded about one third. So every, um, and then there's 34 programs. So it's federalized almost like states are. Um, there's, a fed, there's a national level and there's a state level where all the work actually gets done. And so this is us here in Minnesota. Sea Grant supports has made four main focus areas. These are health, healthy coastal ecosystems, single fisheries and aquaculture, resilient communities and economies, environmental lit literacy and workforce development. So these are pretty broad. Um, on a high level, you can think of Sea Grant as the equivalent to kind of what the mission of the land grant university does is that there's a lot of land grant enables us to have things like extension educators. Sea Grant extension educators for um, land grant is for agriculture and land management. Sea Grant, it's the same thing for our coastal um, and um, marine and Great Lakes resources. So really kind of supplying some of this research and extension to these other resources. So Minnesota Sea Grant has a specific mission um, looking at Lake Superior as well as Minnesota Inland Waters. And so we kind of have two major parts. So really identify the research and communication needs that are existing, um, and then doing the research that we need to do to address some of those needs, and then communicating those needs to the public. And so you can notice that this is really a two-step process. So we have the first step in my part of this process, and where many of you will likely come in, um, is that is um, research. So we have a few different research programs um, that we fund, and again, I said we're system-wide, so there's a couple of them out there, but the major one is our biennial request for proposals. So every other year, so this is come, this is due in an, uh, the spring of an odd year, um, we accept proposals. So that we actually put out the um, request in the fall of even year. So we'll put out the request for proposals this fall, and then the proposal will be due next spring. Um, and about $200,000 is a typical research grant that we get. And so that's usually two years of graduate student funding and then um, somewhere around 50 grand um, a year for each project funding. So not, not a multi-million dollar um, NSF grant, but a pretty good way to get a research program started. We also do fast track grants, um, internships and fellowships and some targeted opportunities. So I'll talk a little bit about each one of these opportunities a little bit further on. And the other part is our extension. So we have multiple 11 extension educators across our program um, doing things work on stormwater. So some of them are collaborative with the water resource centers. So they're actually here on this campus. Other ones are up in Duluth. So we all do things like aquaculture, fisheries, aquatic invasive species, um, community resilience, and educator workshops. So having both that research in, um, in the extension component. So what do I do? So where do I fall in this kind of Sea Grant scheme? So I'm the, I consider myself kind of a social facilitator. It's my job to really sit at the gap between what we know and what we need to know um, and try to get researchers like you to really think about uh, or to fix some of those problems. So we have researchers and stakeholders here. Um, we work with our extension educators to identify needs, research needs. Um, and then it's my job to turn these into a request for proposals, solicit solutions, um, and get um, have the researchers think of ideas. Okay, here's a problem. How would we address that? What do we need to know? Um, what can we do? What can a graduate student do in two years that actually make progress on this issue? Um, and then we actually, the big thing we're seeing that's different is we have all these extension educators um, and communica uh, communications team to actually work with our researchers and these results to get these results back to the community. So I'm um, trying to make sure that the, what we're doing, just like the extension does um, here in the main part, kind of doing traditional extension work, really making sure we communicate these results. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about our specific opportunities. So um, the way we do some of our workforce development research is through for some very specific programs. Um, so there's four specific programs for students that I'm going to talk about here. So 
If you're not a student, don't tune out because most of us interact with students, whether it be graduate students or undergraduates. And some of these programs are really, um, can really make a huge difference in some of our students' lives. So I ask that you please pay attention. Um, our major workforce is a very unique opportunity to actually spend a year working within the federal government um, in DC doing kind of science to policy work. And so we can send up to six um, students from Minnesota, we can send six applicants and then they have competed at a national level um, for a one-year paid fellowship working in DC within a federal government office or a legislative office. So the one key here, so not everybody in SWAC maybe it will do waterway stuff. So you really have to be, you have to be able to at least make an argument that you're interested in kind of Great Lakes Marine or um, coastal policy and management. So on a broad scale. So, but if you're doing water quality work or something, or even nutrient management, there's a pretty good argument for that, that that's very relational. So, or if you're even interested in Great Lakes. So, but this is a great opportunity to spend a year in DC doing some of this policy um, stuff to directly be there. And this is due in February. So if you had decided this year that you wanted to do it, um, it's due in two days. So um, it's kind of late, but um, any, but you could do it next year and this is annual. So this comes through, um, there's about 70 fellows placed from everywhere across the country every year. So um, this we think is one of our greatest opportunities for our graduate students. You have to be a graduate student when you apply so um, you apply, you, you have to be a graduate student either in the fall or kind of in that winter semester when, when the applications are due. You don't have to be a graduate student when you do the actual fellowship. So um, the other thing to know here that this one does come with direct, um, so I, I guess I kind of talked about this, but this is, you directly affect federal policy. You also get direct higher eligibility. Um, so I know I'm, I feel like I'm doing a little ad, but um, it makes it easier to get hired for the federal government if you're interested in working for the federal government. So. If you have a goal or students you have, you know, have a goal of working for the federal government, this is a potential program to get in that door. So we also have a program that's called the Coastal Fellowships. This is a, a post-grad fellowship. So if you have anybody that is interested in working on coastal issues, whether it be sediment management or erosion or invasive species or anything else, um, it's in kind of this coastal world. Um, this is a two-year postgraduate fellowship. So you can apply for it after you graduate. And this would place you with a partner um, Coastal Management Office um, any, or across the country. So usually there's about 12 offices that host. And you can actually see the projects that they're actually pitching before you actually go. And some of these projects range from assessing community needs um, to actually doing a very specific research project. So depending on what you're interested in. And these are due in January, so these are already due for the year. Um, but you can see here that topics are pretty broad. So people are doing resource management, you know, geology, marine science, public affairs. Um, but this is actually kind of an image from one of these projects that was actually through Superior Harbor, um, where they're actually doing looking at wetlands and stuff. So um, these things are relevant to what some of our researchers are doing, even in a department that's to have water, agriculture, and atmosphere stuff. So, um, and then most of the people that go to this fellowship actually end up in state government. So if you're interested in working um, for the state government, this is a potential route to get there. Um, and I'm gonna, I don't believe most people in soil, water, and climate are doing fisheries work. But we also have a fellowship that's essentially a, um, it's a partnership with the National Marine Fisheries Service, um, and it essentially works like the NSFGRP, where it's three years of research funding and full-time um, graduate student funding. So I'm going to go over this one pretty quickly because I don't think it's super relevant to you guys in LAS. So, but the one that I do want to pitch, because this one's relevant to almost everybody that works in the university, um, because all of us interact with undergraduates at some level, um, and most of us do something that's related to NOAA. So if you've ever done any work related to weather or climate or water, uh, this is a great opportunity. This is $10,000 a year for the second two years or for the last two years of your undergraduate career as a scholarship, as well as essentially a paid internship at a NOAA facility. So if you have anybody, any student that's looking for an opportunity kind of working in a um, science environment and any interest with NOAA, um, this is a great way to get there. So, but the key is they have, can only apply if they're stuck. Or in fact, a traditional sophomore or a transfer student, or they're a third year and a five year program. So it's a bit of most people will need to be a sophomore. So, uh, but again, these are due this year. But if you're if you run into a student that's kind of really interested in working in the sciences and they're kind of looking for opportunities, and uh, this is a great way to kind of really get them in the door. So, um, so now I'm going to go into research opportunities. So this is kind of to the meat of what we do and kind of what I do here. So, and the big thing is that biannual RFP. So every other year where we actually ask um, researchers to think of ideas to stress some of the problems we have. 
So we put that out again, as I said earlier, in the, um, kind of we accept, I guess we accept applications in the spring, winter of odd years, uh, and funding starts in even years. So we're about to start um, a few different projects, um, some actually within this department as well, um, that will start right now and they'll run for two years. And so typical kind of support and two years of graduate support in about 45 grand a year. Um, so, and then one thing you know here, there's no indirect costs to University of Minnesota researchers. Um, I know sometimes departments like to get some money back too, so that's what that means. So, what kind of Carl? But <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so, but we do have a, we, um, there is a request 30% match, but that's something that we kind of negotiate on a case by case basis as well. Um, so, if you feel like you can't give a 30% match, we'll work with you on that. Um, and again, these topics that we're doing here are pretty, um, Broad, um, we'll usually in our RFP in a given year, we'll have identified specific issues that we really want to address. And so, and that's really um, a large part of my job is to make sure we've identified the issues that are relevant to our stakeholders there. Um, some projects that we funded um, in the past are things like looking at mercury and sulfur movement and mobility and peatlands in kind of the Great Lakes Basin or the Lake Superior Basin, looking at things like soil chemistry and like microbiome transport with wild rice. Um, and doing things like ice cover and biological productivity in Lake Superior. And so there's actually at least one project that's in um, it's in this WAC that's coming through, but I think I'm not supposed to talk about it yet because it's, I think, it's it's for sure funded, but um, we're not supposed to talk about things until the money's in hand. So um, other than our annual RFP, we also have a fast track grant. So if you have a small project um, that is, especially things that are response to current environmental issues. so. If there's a very large fire in um, near a coastal community or something like that, and you want to do air quality work, um, that's a potential um, opportunity here. Um, or if you want to submit a large proposal, but you don't have the, um, the data that you might need. So this is really a kick, it's a seed and a fast track program here. So we really want to fund, kind of leverage the seed grant funds to get you some larger funding sources, as well as um, fund, fund kind of urgent responses. So, and we're, always accepting applications for these until we spend all of our money and we're not there yet. So um, we you can definitely apply for that. And there's, this is no indirect cost and no match. Uh, things we funded for this. So in I think 2018, there was a fire in, um, in Superior where they had a hydrofluoric acid kind of fire going on. So they evacuated the whole city. And so we, we funded some sampling in response to that, um, as well as looking at economic impacts of another thing, economic impacts of cruise industry and twin ports and then when um, COVID happened, that we did some monitoring along the beaches in Duluth and Superior about, you know, it was COVID actually in the water. So, um, yeah, so that's, I know I kind of felt a little bit like an ad, but I think we have a lot of great opportunities. So maybe I'll, hopefully um, someone else will give you the research side, maybe if you're really looking for that. But yeah, I encourage you to kind of keep your grant in mind when you guys are thinking about opportunities for you and for students. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Take questions or yeah. So we don't directly. Can I ask sorry. Can I ask you to take a question in the middle? Yes. Sorry. Um. So they asked um that if if we have research vessels and how does this fit in? So we don't directly manage research vessels. So I believe the Large Lakes Observatory does, um, and so they're in a separate institution. We often fund research that's being done by those scientists, um, but we don't directly manage the research vessels. So, but if you're, but often, if you're interested in a project on a vessel and you want to get secret funds with it, that's something that we can help you like navigate too. So, because we have um, help proposals like get research or vessel time too. So, other questions? Do you get to do any research yourself or are you moving towards it? No, so I'm supposed to be about, I mean, I, I, I'm trying for half time at least research. And so, and my goal is to have all these things kind of run by mostly by themselves, all these competitions. Like I can do some of this and then, but really it will spend research. So my position is written as a research, at least uh, at least a significant portion of research time. So um, so I need to be kind of getting the ball rolling and the proposal submission and stuff like that. So, so yeah. Uh, just, I think of the nature of the grant program, I'm wondering if you are receiving um, grants from the other um, that are focused on pollution from agriculture, et cetera. Yeah, so I see grant. Um, so I don't know how much our program has in the past, 
done specifically that, but I know other student grant programs have, and I, it's an issue that's relevant in Minnesota to our water resources and our lakes and our coastal communities. So um, I would, if you think you have something that's close, um, we do a pre-proposal process. So what that means is that you can write a short page before you spend a week or two or three putting a real proposal or a deep proposal together. And we can tell you whether or not we think that it's going to fly for this year. We can, um, so that's what I would recommend. I think <laughs> yes, but it's going to depend on the year. Because some years we are we're relatively small. I mean, I think we still fund a decent amount of research, but um, we're not funding forty projects a year. I think if we were, I'd say yes. But I think it's going to depend on the year and what our research priorities are, are in a given year. So, other oh. questions? Oh, sorry. Well, I was going to say maybe we should move on. But okay. Yeah. Out, no. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, 